Well, it's time for the Texas Bucket List Bite of the Week. And this week, I'm in my old hometown of Round Rock to try a little pasta at the Palermo Pasta House. In the middle of downtown Round Rock, just a stone's throw away from the town's namesake, you'll find the Palermo Pasta House, an elegant yet down-home Italian restaurant that has Argentinian roots. You know, we're really aiming at, at, the, at the pasta side of Argentine culture. Tony Hener grew up way south of here, in the South American country known for their Italian lineage. In Argentina, um, half the people are of Italian descent. So if, even if I don't have an Italian surname, there was always an Italian in the family. And we grew up with Italian food as not Italian food, we just call it food. Doesn't everyone's grandma make ravioli on Sunday? While he's not a grandma, Tony does make all his own pastas and sauces by hand. I do not describe myself as a Italian American eatery because it's not exactly what, what, what I propose and what I aim for. Um, I try to keep it more Italian uh, with some of the influences of, of, of Argentina too. You're telling me there's no never ending salad and breadsticks here? <laughs> <laughs> Never ending nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this makes making ravioli look way too easy. Well, the volume that we need to produce, we need to make it, uh, you know, and like in this. As this, efficiently this as possible. Exactly. Because <laughs> Why is it important for you to make your own pasta? Because it's a different flavor and texture than dried pasta. I mean, there's perfectly good dried pasta, but making it fresh is a different flavor, different texture. And this is part of the Argentine thing that I imbue into what I do. The pizza looks perfect. The calzone's incredible, but apparently the pasta is so good that even kids go crazy. The kids need to pick it up and start doing this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Encouraged to play with your food here, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once you've picked your pasta, the next task is trying to figure out which of the 28 different types of sauces you want to try. Kind of mind boggling because you read them through and then I got to go back to the beginning and see what I missed. So I have never seen so many sauces on a menu in my life. <laughs> well, we start with Red and white, basically you start with tomato basil and a cream sauce, cream, you know, parmesan and, and butter. And then we start adding things, you know, it's like, like music. This is a chord and then, you, you know, you add different layers to it. It's, it's fascinating even to see them in the distinction between all the sauces as well. Um, the distinct flavors, the distinct looks. Um, we've tried multiple different flavors and of the sauces and they were all, they're all good. We are getting some carbs tonight, Tony. <laughs> One does not simply order pasta here without a plethora of questions. So we let Tony put together his own tour of Italy. Every pasta dish, you have to cook the, uh, the sauce to order off right here. Yes. Wow. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. You guys uh, get pretty saucy back here, huh? No, man. Ramon, the kitchen manager, got things started. Now he's gonna be making the uh, the mushroom marsala. That's our mushroom base. Okay. It's already been cooked with uh, garlic and butter okay. and seasonings. Okay. Now he's going to caramelize them. After that, cream and Parmesan cheese complete the ensemble, while linguine is warmed up and put in for pasta. So I'm assuming that it doesn't have to be in there for seven to nine minutes. No, no, this is <laughs> this is actually like two minutes. Next up is the pink mushroom sauce. Mushrooms are added once again, but this time the tomato basil and cream sauce get blended together while fusilli pasta is added. And that's all it is. That's how you make your yeah. pink. Yeah. Last but not least is the puttanesca. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to mumble these pasta names on camera. The puttanesca starts with capers, chopped kalamata olives, and no, that's not butter, that's garlic. Tomato basil sauce is added with a spicy topper. These are crushed Calabrian red peppers. So how do those differ from regular red pepper? They're not as hot, they're a little more flavorful. With three distinct dishes to try, I got my gaucho on and saddled up for a wild ride of Argentinian Italian cuisine. Well, we're gonna get our pasta on. I still can't believe you don't have good six. <laughs> ah, cleanse the palate for the first pasta and we dig into the mushroom marsala with a fettuccine pasta here. The sauce smells buttery and garlicky and delicious. So nice to find good Italian here in Texas. I must be telepathic, cause I knew that before I even tasted it. You think you've had pasta before? <laughs> you need to try this one. The food is fantastic. The freshness of the fettuccine is fine. I love this place. It's my favorite Italian place, it really is. I must set this aside. Fantastic, I mean you can. I mean, just to have this. And now we move on to the pink mushroom sauce with a facility pasta, kind of like a spiral pasta. Nice little mixture of tomato basil and cream here. 
The fusilli pasta definitely gives this dish a little more oomph, like a little more heaviness. But the sauce is amazing. It's thicker, it's better, it's buttery, it's you can tell it's fresh and it's not frozen. So you can really taste it. Fantastic. Authentic, the flavor, everything is fresh. On to the puttanesca. This has got a tomato basil there with those capers and of course the Kamada olives. So big, bold flavors with that fancy taglarini pasta. Oh man. That pretty much explains it. So much better than anywhere else. I just can't get anything else like I get here. This is totally different from anything I've ever had. It's amazing. It's pretty close. I've been to Italy. <laughs> well, if you're looking for the perfect pasta dish or pizzas and calzones or more your speed, coming to the Palermo Pasta House in Round Rock, Texas is truly well worth a stop on the Texas bucket list. You can't go wrong, that's, that's what's crazy. <laughs> it's like, you're like, oh, maybe this one won't taste so good. And you get it, and you're like, no, it tastes pretty good. <laughs> it is a little bit different than what people are used to, but that's what we've carved our niche, making fresh pasta and fresh sauces, and, and um, everything's made in-house. I mean, it's, it's, not everyone does that. <laughs>